nuts and bolts are on me, Palmadero. That lovely victim of And next on Radio 2, it's the abdication of Terry Wogan, giving up the throne and the crown of England for the woman he loves. Victoria Principal. We'll miss you a million stairs, Tell. I suppose it drinks out of the question. Radio 2. It's 7.30, the news headlines, with counting underway in the Indian General... More news at 8 o'clock. BBC Radio 2, Terry Wogan. And for the final time, good morning. Dashed glad of your company. If you can spare any of it between now and ten, I go on. It's me final chance. One of the great openers. The four tops. Great, great record. Wonderful way. Thank you, Colin. Wonderful way to open up my final fling at you. A final Friday fling. A final Friday fandango. Hanging on grimly as ever here until 10 o'clock. And a program which I, I, I'm sure will be full of reminisce and nostalgia. I shall dash away the manly tear, of course. And I, I hope you'll do the same with your man, boy, child, woman, dog, cat, Egypt, whatever. Good music, too, between now and 10. Well, all our favourites... Many years ago, there's going to be a lot of introductions this morning to start many years ago, but many years ago... I think I was the first to play this. And played it and played it. And it became a hit. The very first for Peter Skellen. Wonderful. You're a lady. Oh, it is a morning for nostalgia. You'll indulge me there. And I hope... Uh, you'll remember many of the songs and many of the circumstances in which they were played and much of the fun that we had playing those songs. I've got a beautiful one coming up next. It's uh, almost 20 minutes to eight if you're thinking of rushing off anywhere in a marked manner to, as it were, burst into floods of tears so as the children won't see you. But, uh, I'm just going through all the letters and cards and many of the letters and cards that have made this job for me such a pleasure, such fun over the last 12 years. I mean... Uh, this is from the book that I, I snitched from your letters. One of the books called The Day Job. The letter that came from a lady called Alison Gray in Southport. It said, My mum said the BBC were getting rid of you. You see, many a true word spoken severely years ago. Getting rid of you and putting David Hamilton on instead. Well, David thought that as well, didn't he? <laughs> it wasn't to be. It's old Bruce Kent who's coming along, complete with dog collar. Is this true? I hope not, because of my tortoise. If it wasn't for you, Terry, I'd never be able to control Toby. Your early morning jokes and music send Toby to sleep. My other tortoise, uh, Tolketh, died through too much exercise. When we didn't, when we didn't, when we didn't turn you on, you'll have to, you'll have to forgive me this morning. You're terribly emotional, and I may well lose the power of speech before I finish. I'll certainly be the worst for drink. I'm going to get this shed finished before I go, though, I'll tell you that. Now, well, let's get back to the shed, lads. I told you I'd get it finished before I went. It's just after 16 minutes to 8. Um, a day not untinged with sadness. And yet, I'm sure you feel as happy as anybody. Happy as Larry, in fact seeing the back of me. I shall be sad not to see the back of Ray Moore's neck again. I shall probably see far too much of his front, really. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before we present the Variety Club Awards again. Him standing in the wind and rain behind the railings outside the Hilton and me inside all snug and warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always think Ray Moore is a better outside man. Yes, well, so do I. <laughs> but I shall miss the old fool, the old scouse git. Desperately. Just as I shall miss the place, you know. They've even given me the, the engineer that I started with. My goodness, old Baz. Huh? <laughs> oh, there's been a lot of water passed under the bridge since we started. And what program would be complete without... My beaches! It's twelve and a half minutes to eight, if you're thinking of 
going anywhere today. And if you are going anywhere today, do take it nice and easy because there's uh, a fair amount of ice and fog about. It's uh, Friday, Friday the 28th of December. And I'm playing all my favourites. Colleen Martin, herself half the night. Well, with a couple of drinks by his side, of course. Selecting the music for this programme for our final thing. And I've got them all in this morning. So if you've got nothing else to do, we'll have people like Jerry Rafferty and Michael Jackson and Marvin Gaye hearing it through the grapevine and Kenny Rogers and Lucille. Remember the 400 children and a crock in the field. And you even got Postman Pat in. And Art Garfarkel and Miss Unites. Lots of good stuff between now and ten o'clock to ease you into the day. I've always loved this best of Randy Edelman's songs. The Woman on Your Arm. Oh, it's lovely. It's Randy Edelman and The Woman on Your Arm. Steady, men, steady. It's just after eight minutes to eight o'clock. I am surrounded by cameras and cameramen and reporters because for some reason it is thought that this ought to be commemorated forever on film, or at least until they run out of space, in which case they, they burn the film and get rid of it, you see. I was just looking through this old book and remembering songs for swinging varicose things that we had. Do you remember that years ago? I, mean, I got the idea from Akko Bilk. We flew to Castle Bar in the west of Ireland one time to do the the uh, international song contest there in the Corrugated Iron Shed. And we had a wonderful time, but he gave me this idea for songs for swinging things. And, and you, of course, the listener, came rushing in with all sorts of ideas like songs for swinging drunks, the soaks who live on the hill, <laughs> songs for swinging sewer men, you stepped out of a drain. <laughs> Wonderful. Songs for swinging undertakers, painting the shrouds with sunshine. What about this? Songs for swinging longbow manufacturers. I've got you under my skin. Now that's really good. Cool. Songs for swinging nuns. I left my heart with some Franciscans. <laughs> or I think the very best one ever was songs for swinging German asylum doctors. God rest ye, Jerry Mentleman. That's always been one of my favourite Diana Ross. Last time I saw him, we'll have the news very shortly, well, in about four minutes' time. On this Friday morning, I'm sure most of you are still abed, enjoying the Christmas holidays. And we're flogging ourselves away here. Haven't opened the drink yet. There will be... <laughs> there will be a degeneration of this programme, I'm telling you, as soon as the booze is open. Anyway, I'm, I'm just keeping me... So confining myself to the BBC coffee at the moment. And uh, this next piece of music I have... I'd have to play in any program of mine, in any sort of compendium or omnibus edition of any program, because it's the theme from Dallas. And really, I've had hours, years of endless pleasure with Dallas. And I'm sure you have, too. I mean, remember the early days when old, old J.R. showed himself in his true colours very early on. But he, he got shot long before Bobby got shot. And they used to congregate around the swimming pool in a Force 10 gale. Do you remember that? And do you remember the wire coat hangers that Miss Ellie used to use? With all her money, she'd walk into this wardrobe and come out with a wire coat hanger. And they only had one phone. With all their wealth, one phone. They had to come all the way downstairs into the hall to answer the phone. And so it developed until we have the situation now where all the action takes place around a swimming pool. And not a windswept swimming pool either. Everybody acts in a bathing costume in Dallas at the moment. And we've seen old Bobby shot. We've seen him come and go. The old Poison Dwarf's on her way as well. I knew I'd see her off before I went. And it's been endlessly entertaining, and I've certainly had some fun with it, and you have too. And so, it's only suitable we play this from the Frank Barber Orchestra. <laughs> A theme from Dallas. Oh, how to put hairs in your chest. I'm still going to watch it, even if I can't talk about it anymore. Great, marvellous series. See you after the news. Radio 2. It's 8 o'clock. Good morning. Here's the news read by Hilary Osborne. Police are out in the streets of Delhi as the count begins in India's general election. 
Mr. Terry Waite prepares to report back to Dr. Runcie on his mission to Libya. Scotland and Northern Ireland will have some rain, especially in the west tonight. And that's the news, and now back for the last time. At this time, sob sob to Terry Wogan. Courage, Camille, courage. Oh, how we're going to get through the next two hours. You'll have to come down and, and soothe my fevered brow, Hilary. And then later on, soothe the other fevered parts of me. I don't know what I'd do without the coffee. Playing all the favorites between now and ten. All the songs you have loved for the last twelve years. Jerry Rafferty, Baker Street. Hey, Jerry Rafferty, Baker Street. I shall miss playing records like that. Now, s stop me if you find me getting a bit too maudlin here this morning. Because you know what I'm like. A sentimental old fool to the last. And not only playing the music, but going back over the things that... <laughs> that caused us the most fun and frolic in the course of 12 long, weary years. Do you remember, for some reason, we got started in on, on Swahili... And somebody sent me a Swahili phrase book. Tja kokoto kapigili sana. Put it in the rubble and beat it well. Paswa kichwa koripi mpishi ule ubongo. How old are these droppings? <laughs> <laughs> now what about this one? Watapata katuana katuka hapa. Can they smell us from here? One of my favorite songs about a rat. Michael, jo ja Michael Jackson and Ben. today, all right. That's Michael Jackson and Ben. Radio 2 Travel News He waits until his final program to get it as close to quarter past eight as I've ever done it. It's Fifteen and a half past eight, actually, and icy road conditions continue to affect much of the British Isles this morning. Fog being an additional hazard in parts of the eastern and southern parts of England. In the Thames Valley, patchy fog persists. There is a 40 mile per hour advisory speed limit on the M4 between junction 12 near Teal through to Wiltshire. In Kent, there are icy road conditions, and although the fog is generally lifted, it still persists around the Medway towns, and the M2 is subject to a 40 mile per hour limit between Chatham and the London end of the M2. The M3 is also subject to a 40 mile per hour limit throughout its entire length in Surrey and Hampshire, and in Essex, dense fog persists on the M25 approach to the Dartford Tunnel, visibility reduced to 100 yards in places. So, as we always say, wherever you're driving this morning, take extra care. If you are in areas where fog has been reported, do slow down, keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front, use the dipped headlights, and if you've got a little man with a red flag to walk in front of you, so much the better. If you're the driver of a heavy vehicle, you need a good deal longer to pull up. I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs, but in these kind of conditions, all vehicles need a good deal longer to pull up. No problems have been reported for the air, the rail, or the ferry travellers this morning. And do you remember this? 400 children and a crock in the field. What a dilemma for old Lucille in a bar in Toledo, across from the depot. Beautiful song. Rita Coolidge, Neil Sadaka's master of the hungry years. It's 25 past eight. I think we have racing information, but probably my, this being the class of day that's in us, my racing advisor is the worst for drink somewhere. Apropos of that, you remember this little verse that I got around about 1976 or 77, uh, when, at the time, um, virgins were still rampant here in the BBC and various unspeakable happenings used to go on on the roof and, and the whole building circled menacingly by an albatross. I'll tell you a tale of the bee blads where they play all the latest hits and that harsh rending sound you can hear from the ground is the DG performing the splits. Yes, he's up on the roof keeping fit lads. While most are just taking a rest, he's cavorting about, disregarding his gout in a filthy old anchor like vest. You. But what is that terrible smell, lads? From that shed almost hidden from view. Hang your heads in disgrace. For this is the place where they melt Wogan's winners for glue. Oh, it's boogie time. 
We've always been a show for elderly ravers, haven't we? You know how many lost youth? Marvin Gaye. Let it through the grapevine. Of course you did, you rascal, you boogieing rascal. Get on down, little straight street cred there for the show. Marvin Gaye, how I've loved that over the years. I heard it through the grapevine. And don't forget, Ken Bruce will be taking over for me. Uh, starting, I think, on the 7th. They're going to give him a week of rest and recuperation. Colin Berry will be here next week. But uh, the week after that, Ken Bruce will be taking Now, I want you to look after the little rascal. I mean, he's just a little lad. But I am his dad. <laughs> Shake hands with a millionaire. No, anyway, he's a bearded Scot. And he could do with your support, and he's a smashing fella. So I know you'll look after him as if he was one of your own. Radio it's 8.30, the news headlines. With counting underway in the Indian general election, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi's Congress party has taken an early lead in all seven constituencies in the capital, Delhi. The polling throughout the country was marred by violence. At least 24 people lost their lives. There have also been reports of widespread vote rigging. Mr. Terry Waite, who returned from Libya last night, is expected to see the Archbishop of Canterbury later today to report on his negotiations on the release of the four British detainees there. Mr. Waite has said he's cautiously optimistic that the men will be released soon. Argentina has accused Mrs. Thatcher of arrogance over her Christmas Day broadcast to the Falklands, in which she said the interests of the islanders would continue to be paramount. The Argentine foreign minister said her, said her statement was excessive, the typical expression of a shrinking empire. Fog and ice are again making road conditions dangerous in some parts of the country. Most of the fog is in the south and east. Today's race meeting at Newcastle has been abandoned because of frost, and an inspection is being held at Warwick. And the weather forecasters say England and Wales will be mostly dry, cold and bright, though fog may be slow to clear. Scotland and Northern Ireland will have some rain, especially in the West tonight. More news at nine o'clock. Oh, Hillary. Hillary's in her best frock today. Normally she looks terrifically scruffy, but today she's dressed to kill because the television is here. I wish you dressed up a little bit more, senior racing advisor. Your know, usual tatty self. The old racing hat. The <laughs> disgusting soup stained jacket and the smell of those Wellington boots. Very well for the final time, clumber up the beasties. Radio 2 goes racing. Well, racing's extended Christmas holiday program continues with fixtures this afternoon at Fontwell, Taunton and Warwick. But the meeting at Newcastle, as you've heard, has been abandoned as a result of the heavy frost. Now, Fontwell has a couple of valuable prizes to be won, the biggest of which is for the salmon spray hurdle, which should be won by Joyride. And while Greg Namana... That's pretty good, isn't it, senior racing advisor? Greg Nalana there. May spring a surprise. Northwest looks a more likely prospect for the White Law Challenge Cup chase. Will he be there? Sheikh Ali Abu Hamseen. What? Is steeplechasing's most avid supporter, and he's likely to be a taunt and to see his lucky Georgie in action in the Northover Manor Hotel chase, while the Tariyas could just upset the odds-on chance of Hunter River and give Dave Tom another winner in Warwick's Bob Cratchit novices hurdle. Did you cry? Did you cry at Scrooge, senior racing advisor? Christmas Carol always burst into uncontrollable tears. The children laugh at me. The big race on the Midlands course is the Edward Courage Cup, which ought to go to Arden Spy. At least it would have before we mentioned it. But there's a word of warning here. There's frost in the ground at Warwick, and an inspection is taking place there now. So there's a doubt over Warwick. Is there a senior racing about it? Question mark over Warwick. Frost and crusted question mark. Meetings then. Taunton and Warwick, we hope. That's subject to the inspection. Uh, at 12.45. Fontwell starts at 1. Newcastle has been abandoned. Now then, we're going to go to Fontwell. Where is Fontwell, senior racing? Classics. Of course it is. Just testing you. My hat, senior racing advisor, this is your very final tip, isn't it? Gone, oh, I know after I've gone. I mean, for me, you don't expect me to talk for anybody else. Senior racing advisor, we've been through a great deal together, you and me, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, over the long and weary years, is there anything you'd like to say? Any tribute you'd like to pay? Would you like to give me money? 
No, you're a rotten tipster. Twelve years. Twelve years and stabbed in the back by Fairburn. <laughs> I was going to rain kisses on your upturned apple cheeks and I'm going to mother now. This is going to win, is it? Northwest in the two o'clock at Fontwell. Have your thermal undies on it. And if it doesn't win, I don't care. I won't be here on Monday. That's Paul Simon. Train in the distance. The faraway hills are green. Because I'm making a terrible mistake. General feeling here in broadcasting, he'll be back. He'll come crawling back. And when he does, we won't have him. It's 21 minutes to 9 o'clock. Look at them all out there, as I say, knocking it back for further orders. Just thinking about Wogan's winner there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I had a little horse, or an interest in a horse. I owned, I think, a fetlock, or the, the piece that used to go last past the post, of a horse called Wogan's Wager. And I went up with my senior racing advisor to Chester on one occasion, to the famous Rudai, neath the Roman walls. And then we were all quietly confident. Ooh, a lot of money went on Wogan's Wager that day. She'll be trying, gentlemen, said the trainer. A small, gnarled man who hadn't, who hasn't stuck his head up above the rampart since. Anyway, it took a comfortable position a hundred yards behind the rest of the field and loped easily round last. And uh, as I was standing, listening, among the crowd, listening to the race commentator, and he said, last at the moment, he said, is Wagan's Woja. Terrific. I wish you could have heard the hoots of derision, the snarls that went on. We actually sold Wogan's Wager, didn't we? Senior yeah. racing advisor, we did. Won a lot of races, though. Yes, it won three times in succession after that. <laughs> Lucky Wogan. Oh, that's Art Garfarkle. I, this, this is all going to end in tears, you know. Be tears before bedtime. It's 16 minutes to nine. We'll pause for thought in a moment. Colleen Martin has just brought in a pot. Ray Moore. Has anybody got a, a Havana cigar out there? Ray Moore has offered me 200 players' weights, which somebody sent him for Christmas. He was unable to unload on anybody else. He's certainly not going to smoke them himself. <laughs> oh, coffin nails. What have we got here? Back. You're always the last to know yourself, aren't you? Right up the last minute, I thought there was a chance. But no. This is for Mrs. Betty Wilson of Old Woodhouse. Eighty today, Betty. <laughs> Early in the morning, Not a mark on her. Ken Barry, he had a big hit with that. What a cheery thing. That's Postman Pat. Well then, it's high time we paused for thought and brought back a bit of sobriety to the... I mean, there's people staggering around here at the worst for drink. And it's my drink as well. That's what's annoying me. Why don't we pause for thought? A few final thoughts. He's going too, is he? Huh? They're giving Gerald Priestland the push as well? They can't do that. Dear Terry, oh. I am taking the liberty of writing you this letter knowing full well that with the Christmas hangover still hurting and New Year to be recovered for, there'll be hardly anyone listening and none of those BBC bigwigs on the prowl. Remember me? I'm the tall one with the whistle and the snuff box who used to answer letters from people who wanted to know if their budgies had gone to heaven. If you don't remember that, I was on your TV show just before the American lady who told surprisingly naughty stories. I never told naughty stories, but they gave me the push for saying I didn't believe in the devil. I had hoped to be made Bishop of Durham, but someone else got the job, for which I blame the devil. Dear Terry, I have this religious problem that I thought you might help me with on account of that warm human sympathy they say you have got, that and lots of money. The problem is this. Could you lend me a fiver for the collection on Sunday, as I've run a bit short on account of the holidays, Christmas presents, etc.? 
Now, I know you might say this is not a very religious problem, but believe me, it is, because in the church I'm going to, the collection is what you might call the high spot of the service. Everyone stands up, and the collectors march down the aisle with the money as the organ plays louder and louder, and the vicar stands there looking as if dinner was on the way. Believe me, it is a very sacred moment, and I wouldn't want to spoil it by having to write a post-dated cheque or ask if they take access. It's cash on the nail in that church, and they watch like hawks as the plate goes down the pew. It's not like those big purses they have in some places where you can just put your finger in and stir it about. I dare say you're wondering where your fiver, or if you're feeling really grateful for God's blessings upon you, your tenor will be going. Well, I'm happy to say that next Sunday's collection at St. Bodkin's will be divided between two causes which will be really close to your heart. The mission to godless DJs, uh, they're hoping to put a Bible in every studio, and the Fund for Distressed Broadcasters, which makes grants to middle-aged presenters in desperate need of refreshment. Please, Terry, send everything you can afford, no matter how large, to me, Gerald Priestland, at the BBC Club, the Old Langham Hotel, Portland Place, London, W1A1AAA. Remember, the Bible is full of references to the blessedness of giving. I'll take care of the receiving. Thank you, and God bless you. You wouldn't ever get a penny from me, please. <laughs> I wouldn't say it to his face, of course. He's about six foot eight. Here he is, shambling his way back to the home for the bewildered. And next week, Roger Royal will be along in Portsmouth or each day to discuss some of the resolutions he'll be trying to make. Oh, that's always a pox on resolutions. I, I just hope I'm able to keep going till 10 o'clock. I mean, <laughs> I didn't expect that all the way from Priestland. From such a great height. Do you know, he covered me in dandruff out of his dinner. Like a snow shower. Hey, now. The Sultans of Swing. <laughs> Love it. Love it to tiny little smithereenies. It's just four minutes to nine o'clock, as if you cared. Tis me and me final fling, the last fandango in London. Anybody bring the margarine? Now look, I'm in the Thunderer this morning. Yeah. The Times, I made the Times. Oh, pretty far back, mind you, and there's a picture of me looking like the wrath of God. Terry Wogan's farewell program. And don't think that there isn't an element of satisfaction and pleasure in the writing of that. On the other hand, they're not always right in the thunder. I see from column four, says uh, Joan Wisdish of Beeston in Nottingham. I see from column four of your biography in the Times today that you have not a single drop of theatrical blood in your reins. It's got the bit between me teeth instead. <laughs> An important message for drivers heading south on the M6 in Warwickshire. A serious accident has completely blocked the southbound carriageway near Junction 4. That's the M42 intersection. The southbound carriageway is closed and all southbound traffic is being diverted off the M6 at Junction 4 to rejoin at Junction 3 or 2. The road's unlikely to reopen for another two hours. So be prepared for diversions, long delays, weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Two and a half minutes to nine. Good news on the hour, Hilary Osborne dressed to kill. And now, a little piece of music. I, I had the pleasure of having this, this um, chunky, uh, plucky young woman on my television show. Oh, was it last year or the year before? Who can tell? Time passes so quickly when you're my age. But anyway, she was a big girl. Small, but big, if you see what I mean. And she wanted to sing something else, and I asked her if she'd sing this, and she did. I'm going to have to lie down while this is going on because it's very hard to broadcast when you're in floods of tears.
much money have you got? Are you a well set up young woman? Oh yes she is. Dolly Parton. Well you can't be in time for the news while that kind of thing is going on, can you? Radio 2 Terry Wogan for his last hour with us here on Radio 2. Why Morning. not just say that with so much satisfaction, Osborne? <laughs> Named after a biscuit. I ask you. Do you think that that's why I've got the bald patch? <laughs> the old break dancing. I knew there was something. I'm in my best today. Breakfast with the boss later on the present ruling military junta and giving me rashes and egg. And then slamming the door in my face. How typical of the BBC. Well, my friend, the time is... I dragged myself reluctantly from the chaise long here in this sumptuous studio. After that, drained of all emotion, me withers wrung. That King Cole and that beautiful Hoagy Carmichael stardust. Next, I have something that, uh, again, gave us hours of innocent, unrequited pleasure. Do you remember the thorn birds? you remember the old Cardinal Ralph de Antimacassar? Just... Just didn't quite make Pope. But desperately tried to make everybody else. <laughs> and... Oh, it was wonderful, wasn't it, thorn birds? And there was a, there was a period during, of British life while thorn birds was going on where you could not prize women from in front of the television. Slavering, they were. Slavering is the only way. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sisters. Slavering. Over the gentleman playing Ralph de Antimacassar. That, of course, Richard Chamberlain. Broke many a heart. Oh, the thorn birds. The opposition are in filming me now. I've just seen in the steady men, in the personal columns of the... That was the theme from the thorn birds. You won't get much sense from me from now until 10 o'clock as the drink's gone to my head now. And page 20 of the Thunderer today under announcements in living memory and dialysis, you know, and a New Year message and Sacred Heart of Jesus, thank you for granting my request. Tom, contact Minka. And here in the announcements, I've always... This is it, the ultimate. The ultimate. Goodbye, Terry Wogan, in the announcements column of the Times. Natura il fece e poi rope la stampa which is a very, very old Italian curse. It's 17 minutes past now. This is the time of the year, of course, when people start talking about the weather, you see. And, oh, my, isn't the old frost tremendously sharp? Well, it's certainly done my beans in. And stuff like that, you know. But what a mild autumn it was, and all that kind of stuff, you see. And uh, it's as old as time, because in this programme, we've, we've often had trouble with the winter, you know, uh, when it was at its dankest and darkest a couple of years ago, somebody put forward the idea that you want to keep your eye on the ducks. That it was the ducks that knew what was going on. Now, I poured scorn on the idea, of course, and then I got a letter from the duck observer at the Met Office, and it said, of course it's difficult for the ordinary man in the street to understand how a duck can be any use to the Met Office in these days of instant satellite pictures and computers that can analyse weather reports and predict... Uh, rain up to five hours before it happens but I can assure you when it comes to really long range weather forecasting we still have to rely on the duck take for example the long hot summer of 1976 the computer was forecasting snowstorms throughout June but Harry the Met Office duck was conforming to this old rhyme for that month he's an old rhyme about a duck June if your duck goes ballroom dancing swallows you will soon be glancing but if your duck throws off his sequins, a freak frost will do your beans in. Well, no. And in August, if your duck eats crisps with Guinness, it's lovely weather for playing tennis. But if your duck throws down the packet, forked lightning will hit your racket. These are these steeped in, in time, lore and mythology, these old poems. Sadly, according to Pat Carr, who is the duck observer in the Met Office, sadly, due to the government's cuts, we've had to cease the long-range forecast, but we're hoping to transfer Harry, the weather forecasting duck, to the 24-hour forecast. So if you see a bulge in Michael Fish's trousers, you'll know it's only Harry giving a last-minute report. <laughs> Oh, 
They're doing this to me deliberately, you know, this morning. This could have been written for me, going nowhere. Considering so many folks. Yes, yes. That's Neil Sedaka. I've loved that for years. That's the second Neil Sedaka song we've had on the program. We wrote some beauties, and that's going nowhere. He'll be back. He'll come crawling back. Biggest mistake of his professional career. They're all right, of course. Would you kindly get your head out of the way? There you are. 23 minutes past 9 o'clock is the time here on Grand Radio 2. And the cards are still coming in. Here's a big Christmas kiss for you. We open it, it says. And if you like that, I've got a whole lot of other stuff. Hey, the crystals. I'll be lost. Youth, mother. That's the Crystals and the do ron ron from Phil Spector's Greatest Hits. Bayek, we've had a bit of fun here, haven't we, over the long and weary years. Have I got anything on the other turntable? Oh, yes, I have. That's all right. <laughs> I'd hate for there to be a technical hitch on this, my final programme. I'm desperately trying to get the thing right at last, after 12 years, just in the hopes that they may change their mind, bring him back. But uh, we've had some fun, haven't we? This programme has come from places as far afield as Edmonton in Canada, and Bridlington. Uh, I've been on the Isle of Wight, the Isle of Man, the Isle of Dogs, the Isle of Guernsey, the Isle of Jersey. It's been terrific. I've had such fun. And, and you, of course, as the listeners, have contributed such a great deal to the programme. In fact, without you, as I've said many a time and often, I should be sitting here totally mum chance and lost for words. How was it that we, we came up with... Um, what was the particular song about Tiki? The Pina Colada song, and then... Um, that degenerated into kind of songs that you could associate with booze, like another glass of champagne, Perry Terry, or care for a Tia Maria with your beer, Wazir, or how about a rusty nail, Abigail, or a glass of Sauterne, Urn, or try the syrup of figs, Ronnie Biggs. It'll keep you on the move. <laughs> And then somebody else sort of marvellous. It was a chap called Morris Warwick of Cheadle Hume. He used to play full-back for Manchester United in Cheshire. As a denizen of Cheadle Hume with strong transatlantic licks, I have been most fortunate having received first-hand training in putting away tequila shooters, a drink whose description you chose to mangle this morning. Set the record straight, you need the following ingredients. I hope you're taking notes, because this could be very, very good for the New Year's party. A bottle of tequila and a glass, a small mound of salt... A lime, for which a lemon is but a poor substitute in quarters. First, you put a pinch of salt on the back of one hand, and a slug, that being the technical term, for a double measure of tequila in the glass. Lick salt, drink down the slug of tequila in one go, and then quickly bite into the quarter of lime. Then you continue by licking a pinch of lime off your hand, downing the tequila, and biting a quarter of salt. Then you put some tequila on your hand, drink a salt of lime, and bite into a slug. Then you put salt on the slug, lick the tequila in your quarters, and bite the back of your hand. The ideal one, I think, for the new year. This is lovely, from Clifford T. Ward, Home Thoughts from Abroad. I could be a millionaire if I had the money. Oh, that's such a beautiful song. That's for Am. Uh, from the album Lovers and Clifford T. Ward and Home Thoughts from Abroad. And Derek Mills has been a chum of mine for longer than I would care to name, and indeed longer than he would care me to name as well, has brought me in uh, a little uh, framed copy of a page of the Radio Times, September the 22nd, 1966. Sorry, to September... Well, that was the start of the week. This was... Tuesday, September the 27th. The light programme. And as far as he can gauge, and as far as I know, it's my very first broadcast for uh, BBC Radio. Uh, I did, as I remember, on a line from Dublin, which used to break down with the study regularity if a seagull stood on it. Uh, perhaps if a seagull had stood on it more regularly, you might have been spared a lot of pain and travail. But this, I, I see that I'm over a picture of David Jacobs, that well-known DJ, he was doing Housewives' Choice. But a 12.15 midday spin presents Terry Wogan. Programmes used to present you in those days rather than you present programmes. Hey, you remember this? Fair-haired Lissies at the door. 
stargazing. Well, the light all shines across the bay. The old bones that shore have felt till Come home, my love. Come home, dear love. Come home. Lighthouse across the bay. Seagulls. And up there had Lassie at the door. Stargazing. That was such a hit and such a success when we played it. Conrad White, that was one of the great stars. When the lighthouse shines across the bay. Uh, just a moment, I must pipe the eye. It puts me in mind of all the people that I've worked with here in the BBC. Engineers and technicians and commissioners and... And producers, yes, I've even worked with a few producers in my time. And secretaries. Shah and Susie are with me this morning. They've, they've slummed it and come in here to chat up a couple of television cameramen, really. That's why they've come in here. <laughs> and I'm very pleased to see them both. They've been marvellous, because as Colin Martin will be the first to admit, they do all the work anyway. Now, in the course of the programme, again, since we are playing the, the records, or some of the records, can't play all of them, that have been most successful, or certainly have tickled your fancy in mind most. There's another one here that became one of the best-selling records of all time. It got tran mistranslated by a lot of people. For instance, it was called Mulligan's Tire. It was called Muck in the Bire. There's a lot of jobs in the fire on the farm I've to do. Some make you happy and some make you blue. Of all these jobs, the one I least desire is to clean out the pigs and the muck on the bire. Muck in the byre, steam rising off the heaps. I desire to smell something else than the muck in the byre, and then there's muck and gintire. And then there was Molly Kintyre, the miss everyone wants to see. My desire's not only to see her, oh, Molly Kintyre, and the punctured back tire, and it was all inspired by this huge hit for Wings and Paul McCartney, the Moll of Kintyre. <laughs> You have to jump in the air when you do that. Lap in the air, and kicking the right foot forward, falling senseless to the ground. That's Mulligan's tires there, the Mulligan tire. Oh, the girls at Gemini box with a kind roses, just for me. I shall wear them next to my bazoon throughout the rest of the program, and some of them in me teeth, girls. I've just come across a marvellous letter, which was appertained to Conrad Veidt's rendering of the lighthouse across the bay, which we heard. Uh, and Gladys of Accrington wrote in a marvellous version, uh, an alternative version, which is, Ich kann nicht vergessen, dass nicht von Dinken sitzen, allein nader stinken und schmellen, der essen der dunken Krunchen und Beer, donner und blitzen der Arome in mein Ehr. And it's translated as, I cannot forget last evening with you, when we sat on the balcony next to the loo, that memorable meal, pickled onions and beer, with the scent of your sweet breath as you nibbled my ear, the last ride on our tandem in spite of the rain. I remember your knickers got caught in the chain. Each day is Valentine's Day. Ouch. Oh, no, no, I'm going to be, I'm going to be all right. I think what'll really depress me is when Jimmy Young comes in. That's depressed me for years. Why should this be any different today? I'm just reminded there by my funny Valentine. Oh, it's such a lovely song. Hmm. Jim, of course, has a very nasty story about that. I'm just reminded of the Northampton Lighthouse for a reason that escaped me. Do you remember the lost city of Leicester? The Northampton Lighthouse. Do you remember those people who desperately made it from Oxford? all the way to London on the A40. And, and several of their members uh, came to the bivouac and said, I'm going out now for just a little while, and never came back. I got lost on the gyratory system in Hangar Lane. But the, the Northampton Lighthouse gave us a bit of pause, because, frankly, I didn't believe it. I mean, what call for a lighthouse in Northampton, you would cry? You and your correspondents are ignorant. The structure being raised at Northampton is a lighthouse. My husband and I, says Antigone Longhurst, who carry marshmallows and thermal underwear between Leighton Buzzard and Wigan in our longboat, find it useful, and will do when it's complete. Just southwest of Northampton, we travel on the canal between Rotherstorpe and Gayton. We have, almost on every trip, collided into a nasty boulder on the west bank. I see. Then, on the other hand, somebody else said, 
In fact, this is a giant rhubarb cloche. You can see the first leaves sprouting through the top. In early June, all the nation's gardeners will foregather at Northampton bus station, a place of great beauty and grace, and marches one down the M1 to Westminster, carrying the giant rhubarb as a gesture of their things toward the 15% VAT on left-handed trowels. And I suppose if there's any letter that sums up the general intellectual level of this programme, that would be it. The old eldritch parsley, the shrieking herb. Good, good boy, he's got the gin. This is it, you. Hey, listen, I brought something for you. Huh? Yeah, it suits you, darling. Thank you. Yeah, here you go. The only way to talk to you, young, is with a rose in your Could teeth. you perhaps, on behalf of the team, we'll all club together, you see? Oh, Jim, well, I know. And I you're know. wearing a good... You're well, wearing I, the what? suit. Well, I saw you wearing your jacket. Yes, I'm How wearing the jacket so they can't see me stomach, Jim. Oh, yes, for the quite, television, you understand. Right, and so I thought I would do the same thing. <laughs> We're all awfully nastily turned Just out today, aren't we? Now. You're trying to pretend that that's the way you dress every day. Are you good at opening champagne? Me. Oh, not many. Always turn the bottle, Jim. What a yes. kindly thought. Hey, old Bill told me that. I didn't like you to spend money on me. Cork, throw in the bottle. I didn't know that before. Oh, yes. It's the same with women. Shall I fill in by telling you what we're doing while you're opening the shampoo? If you must. Okay. If you must. The first item we included especially for you, because you'll find it distinctly encouraging. There is oh, a summary. There hasn't been a rise in, in no. pensions. No. There's a summary by the Manpower Employment Agency which says that job prospects in the first quarter of 1985 are better than they've been for the last five years. Huzzah! So in case anything goes wrong, you'll be all right. Who says you're a harbinger of bad hey, tidings? Listen. I was coming Not on just me. now. Seriously, I was coming on just now, and Bill Cotton was wandering aimlessly along the corridor, oh, he's looking a friend dazed. Of my, friend of mine, Bill. Is. Do you suppose he just realises what he's done? Has it just dawned on him? He just thinks, "What have I done?" Well, I can tell you this. He's looking shell shocked. I will be surprised if either Cotton or Grade survive the year. Well, and so would I. Oh, I did me. <laughs> Item After two. This, I'll be surprised if I survive the. Get program. on, make Jim it pop. Here we go, Jim. Go. Wah! I that can do it. Good. Thank you. And you didn't spill a drop. Look at that. Iron resolve. Yes. Uh, what are we... And considering the state I'm in... Hold on. Not bad. Yes, I hear you've been at it Jimbo. this morning. Oh. And as a matter of fact, you've been drinking as yes, well. Yes, I have. Yeah. And this not is going to go... people can do it If you can make this go oh, hey! the <laughs> I saved you oh, hey! from a rather nasty fate No, there. it's only the coffee that rots the controls. <laughs> if that goes over the controls, you've had it, matey. Uh, Look at this. Of, that's a bit of mums, as you're a friend of mine really, says. Um, you're not uh, sort of... Uh, are you? Not uh, me? Certainly not. <laughs> I've Cheers. perished. This, this, this is it. This Thank is you. it. Here, here. Thank you for how long has it been? Twelve years. Eh? Yeah, but you years. and me together. How oh, long? Yeah, well, oh, I don't know. About it seems a long time. It seems like twelve years. It does. <laughs> and about, oh, about twenty-eight of the Cheers, anyway. Cheers. Listen, all the best. I was going to say best of luck. You don't need luck, but anyway, big, big success. Who doesn't need luck? Of course, Jim? Of course you don't. Thank you. Will you? Will you be lonely? Oh yeah. I shall. Oh, stop crying. I, I hate to see another oh, I man shall. cry. So Bruce can't oh, be all right. If you start to cry, I'll uh, cry. No, I don't. Look, he is. The tears are welling. Mm. Ian, as I speak. Oh, Listen, I've got to go because oh. you've only got seven minutes to go and I can't interfere with your prog. Listen, before you do. Yes. I know. I know. I know. They think we really do that for real. Well, what you actually do is... Don't we, Dave? Yes, but don't you... How dare you leave your lipstick all over my Well, I'll forehead. see you when you come back, then. When you uh, come limping and, yea, crawling back. With my ego between my legs. I shall look forward to that. All right, Jimbo. See you. Have a smash in time, Cheers. and I shall miss and you. you. We'll miss you a great deal. See you. Take care. Take care. I knew it would end in tears. <laughs> it was very nasty, Jim. <laughs> I wish you'd meant it. <laughs> And now we are come to the winter of our discontent. To fold my tent like an Arab, and silently steal away. Not silently enough for you, I'll be bound. My cracky, but the last 12 years have been great fun. And I hope you've enjoyed them as much as I have. Thank you for all your letters, your involvement in the program. If your letters have anything to go by, we've... We've gone through births, marriages, deaths, anniversaries, in jobs, out of jobs. We've been in the bath, in the loo, in the workshop, in the factory, in the office, in the kitchen together. And I've enjoyed every last minute of it. 
I always like to love you and leave you with a good record, but on this occasion, I'm making an exception. <laughs> what else could I finish on? Hey? I thought I could hear the curious tone of the cornet, clarinet and big trombone. It would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. And soon I heard such a bustling and prancing. Then I saw the whole village dancing. In and out of the houses they came. Old folk, young folk, all the same. In that quaint old Cornish town. A very underrated record, I always think. I don't know who he is, but he's a pleasing baritone. Or is it a contralto? Oh, my thanks to you, the listener, for all your letters, for all your support, for all your abuse, for all your kind words. His last 12 years have been marvellous. My thanks to all the producers who've worked with me here on the BBC, the executives. I can't name all the people who've helped me, who've made it such fun. And I hope it won't be too long until I'm back with you again. Jimmy Young awaits your pleasure. I shall miss the old fool particularly. Have a very good day. Have a nice weekend. And I'm afraid I won't be seeing you on Monday. But have a very, very happy and a prosperous new year. It's 10 o'clock. Hilary Osborne at the news desk.